Hello everyone and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington, and we are about to have a fun and quick down and dirty kiki about the ladies of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video and hit the notification bell because today at Two o'clock West Coast time, five o'clock East Coast time. We are going to do a live and a deep dive into all of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills mess, lies, rumors, blind items, affairs, racism, shadiness all over. We are going to do a deep dive because everything has been going down this weekend regarding the ladies. But there are just two things that popped up that I really want to speak about before we do our deep dive today at two o'clock. West Coast time, 5 o'clock East Coast time. So before we do that, let's dive in. First up, I want to talk about Erica Jane's racist microaggressions against Garcelle. Let's talk about that real quick. And we'll get and we'll do a deeper dive into it today as well. But I just wanted to talk about these two things super quickly. The first is I don't know if you guys watched it, but they do like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after show. And so during the after show, you guys can watch it on YouTube or on Bravo if you if you missed it. But during one of the after shows, Erica Jane is talking to Dorit. As we all know, Dorit is a flip flopper. Dorit has no backbone. She's just kind of tofu. She's just there. So. Erica was talking to Dorit and to the producers, you know, for the thing, and, she, and she's saying to Eric, she's saying to Dorit, oh, well, you know, I don't know why Garcelle is being so judgy. She's being so judgmental. Like, she's been through some things. Like, she should know how it feels. And the tone in which she said it to me was very, and you guys know me over here. You know me. I never go to race as the the underlying factor unless I truly think it is. And on, and I really think what Erica was saying 100% had to do with Garcelle's race. Like, what are you getting at, Miss Erica? What do you mean she's been through some things she should know how it is? Why didn't you say that about why? Because Garcelle grew up in Haiti and she didn't grow up from means and she actually used her own God-given talent and work ethic to get everything she has. She's an actual actress. She's an actual host. She's actually talented and she has a real career. Why would she know about, why would she be able to relate to you, Erica, about that? Hmm? Why? Because she was honest and open about her son Oliver's um, struggles with substance abuse and how she was able to help him through that and how he was able to navigate through that. Is that what you mean? Because you're sloppy and drunk every other episode and all over the place. And you are publicly, Miss Erica, talking about mixing meds and alcohol. Is that, is that how she can relate? Hmm? Or because you think that she grew up without means and, and because she's black, all of a sudden she needs to relate to what your current struggle is. And then what exactly is your struggle, Miss Erica? Allegedly losing millions, but we all know you still have the money from victims that you and allegedly your husband exploited. Well, how exactly should Garcelle know how you feel and what you mean what exactly did you mean and your tone to me was derogatory it was a racial microaggression why didn't you say kyle should know how i feel kyle has dealt publicly with her sister's sobriety why didn't you say kyle why didn't you say dorit you should know how i feel dorit's husband and her who knows again i'll say allegedly but all you have to do is google it his company lost a billion dollars, went bankrupt, been in all types of lawsuits and fraud suits, this, that, and the third. Why didn't you say, hey, Dorit, you should know how I feel since you and your husband have been sued for fraud, since you and your husband have filed for bankruptcy, since you and your husband have been through some stuff. Again, why even be like, Kyle, Kyle should know how I feel. Mauricio has been in tons of lawsuits, tons. Not to mention one lawsuit with Erica and Tom named as defendants being sued for $27.1 billion or however much it is. So why should Garcelle 
know what you are going through. You know, Garcelle of all people, Garcelle has been to stuff like she should know. What does that mean? You're saying Garcelle's been in the gutter? Garcelle's been lower than you, so she should know what it feels like? Is that what you're trying to say, Erica? To me, it was, and you guys know I'm the last person to talk about, you know, you know, black and white and all that stuff. But to me, it was a very clear cut racial microaggression on Erica's part against Garcelle. What exactly did you mean by, oh, Garcelle should know what it feels like? Garcelle has never been in the gutter with you, Erica, ever. She's always been a class act and above board and amazing. I'm just talking to your friends who've all been lawsuits for fraud and have dealt with their own substance abuse within their families. But no, you want to say, oh, Garcelle should know. She should know. How exactly should she know? Hey, diva. She is Lisa Renna drinking and mixing with her bag of pills. I mean, exactly, right? Why didn't she say to Lisa? Well, Lisa should know how it feels. Lisa, two seasons ago, was talking about her pills and her anxiety and her Xanax and all of that stuff, going nuts and crazy. But we're going to get into it later today because we're going to do a long Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, all of that stuff. We're going to get into it. So next up, I want to share my conspiracy theory about what Bravo is trying to do when it comes to Diana Jenkins. Hey, Kamiko. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Candy Kane. What's up? So let's get into it, guys. And again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because the day at 2 o'clock West Coast time, 5 o'clock East Coast time, we're going to do a big deep dive into all of the breaking news for the housewives for Beverly Hills. But I just wanted to get these two out because they were irking my nerves. Hey, Diva. Garcelle's son had alcohol and drug problems, so I thought Erica meant that. No, I know she meant that, but my thing is this. Why didn't she say, oh, Kyle should know what I'm going through? Kyle publicly, publicly has gone through a lot of strife when it comes to her sister, Kim Richards' sobriety. But it's Garcelle who needs to know what she's going through. And it also doesn't make any sense because of all people, Garcelle said that her son has substance abuse issues, right? I talked about that earlier. Um... So, of course, Garcelle, of all of them, since it was her actual child, would be even more sensitive to watching someone mix meds and alcohol and go down the wrong path. So this whole, oh, Garcelle should know better. Garcelle has gone through her own things. Oh, Garcelle, are you being genuine? Well, you need to pick a side, Erica, which is it? Is it, oh, your son has struggled. You should know how it feels. Well, that would give her the most empathy of everybody on the show. And that would prove that she actually is the one coming from a genuine place. She never said Kyle should know, given what happened with Kim Richards' sobriety. She never said, oh, Dorit, you should know what I'm going through because, you know, your husband, PK, filed for bankruptcy. Oh, you guys have been sued for fraud. Oh, Mauricio has been sued for fraud. You see what I'm saying? Oh, but Garcelle needs to know how you feel? Why does Garcelle need to know how you feel, Erica? I think it was a I think it was a microaggression. It was a it was a way to put Garcelle in her place. Like you are beneath us. You've been down here. You should know how I feel. That's what I think with that one. Okay. So conspiracy theory as to why I think Bravo is so there was a blind item that came out and it said that there were scenes where people were questioning, asking Diana about her past, you know, how she got her money, book 23, or room 20, the book room 23, you know, all of that stuff, all of that dodgy stuff and everything. And so what has come out is saying the blind item was like this West Coast foreign um, housewife had deleted scenes when people were questioning her about her shady past. Okay, so Bravo has deleted those scenes. Also, remember last week when people were reporting on, oh, the real reason why Diana came on the show was to promote Asher's music career. And I was like, that's BS. That's a, no, that's like either someone from Bravo paid you to run that um, story or that story was just planted and you happen to take the bait. I don't believe that she came on the show to promote Asher's music career at all. I think that Bravo... Once they realized 
the backlash that Diana was getting because of her alleged past, maybe present, who knows, being a, they, we say call her a madame, but I'm just going to call her what she is. She's a pimp and a human trafficker, a human sex trafficker, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. When all of those allegations came up, I think that what Bravo ha has been doing and is trying to distance itself from her. Like, oh, well, no, no, no. She came on the show to promote Asher, you know, because the whole thing around that was like, well, why would she want to come on the show? She already has all this money with such a questionable past. Why would she come on the show? But the real question is, why would Bravo hire her? A person can have a money and a questionable past all day long and still want to be famous. But the question is, why did you hire her, Bravo? Either one or two things. One, you didn't do your, your due diligence and you didn't know about this stuff. Or two, you knew about it and you thought it would bring you ratings. But of course, you misestimated um, the situation and everybody, they're not checking for Diana. She literally ranked the least interesting, the least like housewife pretty much ever or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that, um, and so I think what Bravo is doing is trying to distance itself from Diana. Because again, you have to think about this. Bravo is still a company, it's still a corporation, and it's owned by NBC, right? So the more of the type of back, and, and to me, there is a difference between Teresa, unfortunately, and a Diana. I think that Bravo does not want to be associated with having Diana's allegations linked to them. So they're limiting her time on the screen. They're showing Asher playing the piano rather than actually showing Diana. They're deleting scenes that were talked about it and not showing it. And they're trying to distance herself from her. Oh, she was only on the show to promote Asher. Oh, this, 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 whatever, blah, 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 blah. Because at the end of the day, they're still a business. And we're still, I think for, I, you know, we can talk about cancel culture on another day, but in general, Bravo still has to answer to their investors. They still have to answer to their advertisers. So I really highly doubt that the, that the brands and the businesses and the investors and the shareholders at Bravo or NBC want to be associated with someone who's allegedly a, a child sex trafficker. Because you have to remember, this is a business. We watch it. It's a key key. We recap it. But from Bravo's perspective and NBC's perspective, they are a corporation and they are a business. So what I think that they're doing by deleting scenes, by distancing themselves from Diana, is they're trying to get space between their brand, their reputation, them making the choice to actually hire this woman, and all of the allegations of her being a child sex trafficker. You know, with like the young men, the young boys, the young girls, the starlets, and all of that stuff. I think Bravo is really trying to clean up and distance themselves to lessen any type of liability that they may have. Because did Bravo do it? No. But Bravo, you're being associated with the woman who did. You hired a woman who did. You put her on the platform. What do your investors, what do your advertising people think about that? Because it's bigger than just the show. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so let's see what you guys are saying in the chat box. And don't forget, you guys, today at 2 o'clock West Coast time, we're going live and we're going to do such a deep dive into all of this stuff. Hi, Diva. She goes, Kim can take a pill and she's an alcoholic. Kyle Erica is taking pills and drinking all the time. She's having a good time. No, I think the difference is her behavior. Like, the, like there's a difference between people who drink and people who drink and change and get out of pocket. Like, none of the other women are talking about throwing up and hitting their heads. None of the other women are passing out on boats and being weird. None of the other women are yelling and um, cursing at children, you know. None of the other women are displaying that type of behavior, you know. You can do whatever you want, but it's like, do you change when you drink? Do you change when you take the pills? A says, look at Garcelle Twitter. She just posted. Oh, Okay. Thank you, A. I'm going to check it out after the live. Thank you. Hey, Diva, why isn't Diane doing after show or watch what happens live? Again, they're probably trying to distance themselves from Diana. They're probably trying to distance themselves from Diana because it's not a good look for any, any, any business to be associated with an alleged sex child sex trafficker. Those are the allegations. You know, again, I'm not saying it's a fact. 
but those are the allegations. And at the end of the day, NBC and Bravo need advertisers. They need investors to keep the show, to keep the network alive. And I highly doubt behind closed doors, the people who are advertising on Bravo are happy that they're being advertised next to someone who's allegedly a child trafficker. That's why we're getting these, you know, reports that Bravo deleted the scenes and we're getting these planted stories about Diana only came on to support Asher. B.S. Diana came on the show because she wanted to be famous. Somebody at Bravo or Evolution Media, whoever hired her, dropped the ball. And now it's blowing up in their faces. That's what's going on. Hey, A, she posted a comment against Diana, as she should. Hey, Diva, do you think they cut Cherie scenes at the party? I think they must have. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, when it comes to Cherie, you know, she's kind of the flip. I don't think she's necessarily a flip flopper because I don't think she goes against the other person to roll. But I do think that she is someone who is etching her bets. I think she's trying to be sort of everybody's friend. Like, oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, I saw that too. Oh, yeah, I agree. Just to make sure that she's able to stay on the show and get a diamond. So I don't know. I don't know if they're if they're deleting her scenes or not. Maybe they just weren't that interesting because, again, she's a friend of. And she doesn't have the scandal that Diana has, right? Hey, Natalia. She says, hi. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, Diva, why even hire Diana? Exactly. 100% the casting should have known production must have thought this would be salacious. And corporate said no. I agree 100%. 100%. Diva, yeah, my point is Kyle treated Kim and Erica differently. No, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. I definitely think that um, Kyle did treat Kim and Erica differently. But now, did you see on... Um, the after show, Kyle's now flipping and being like, yeah, well, now I see that Erica was out of control. Yeah, I see that there are a lot of moments. So you 100% right. Yes, Kyle definitely was treating um, Kim and Erica differently. But I think the point, but I think at the root core, both Kim and Erica were displaying poor behavior. But Kyle excused Erica as having fun when the truth is Kim and Erica were both Maybe not in the best places. Hey, Shay B, that's exactly what I was wondering. Where has Diana been? I think I think NBC and Bravo are trying to distance themselves. Because, again, you have to think about the climate that we live in, you know, with um, people being exposed and all of that stuff. I don't, I, if I'm an investor, if I'm an advertiser for NBC or Bravo, I don't want my product next to Diana Jenkins. I don't want to be associated with that. Who does? You know what I mean? And I think that's a one big reason why we're not seeing Diana. Her scenes are being deleted. They're focusing on Asher. They're putting out these blind items. They're putting out these fake storylines. And some people are actually believing that and taking the bait. But yeah. Hey, A, the group is full of hypocrites. I hope Garcelle keeps the same energy because she seems over it. Me too. Me too. I'm excited to see what happens at the reunion and what's going to go with that. Hey, Diva. She goes, I heard Diana is wearing wigs. Why? They aren't um, special looking. I don't know. Maybe something is wrong, is up with her hair. You know, maybe she just wants a fuller look. You know, people, like, trust me, for everything that Diana has done, the last thing I'm going to drag her for is her wigs because she's done enough. She needs to go to jail, allegedly. Hey, Shay B, I think she should be someone we should watch out for. Who should be someone we should watch out for? Diana or Garcelle? Or Erica, let me know. Let me know. Hey, A. Oh, oh, or Cherie. Um, Cherie seems like she is trying to sell Garcelle's diamond. Her interview has been very questionable. Does she even have money? She have allegedly selling fraudulent persons and asking for cash app. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, this is the thing. I mean, she wouldn't have any Will Smith money because their son is an adult. So there wouldn't be any child support anymore. Um, I don't know what she does. I heard that too, that she was selling the sort of like the knockoff purses and stuff like that. And I didn't think that Cherie was trying to steal Garcelle's diamond. I thought that Cherie was trying to steal Sutton's diamond and that she thought the best way to do that was to come in as Garcelle's BFF and sort of take Sutton out. And then she was sort of kissing butt and catering to the Fox Four, the five Fox Four to get on their good side too, to get on their good graces and going after Sutton. Do I think if push came to shove, would she take Garcelle's diamond? 100%. But I do think that initially 
she wanted to come in as Garcelle's BFF. That was already taken by Sutton, so she wanted to take Sutton out. And then she was etching her bets, being like, well, if Garcelle is out, if Sutton is out, if something doesn't go good, I can still come and get this diamond because I've now kissed the butts, you know, I've been, I've kissed the butts of, you know, the, the Fox 4 or whatever it is. So I've, now I'm in their good graces. To me, it's a lack of integrity more so than anything else. Do I think she wants Garcelle's diamond? No, I think she wants a diamond with Garcelle. Do I think if she, if her only option was to take Garcelle's diamond, then yeah, I think she would. Do you see what I'm saying? Hey, Shay B, Cherie, I agree 100%. She is definitely one to look out for, 100%. She's one to look out for. Ah, okay, you guys, my beautiful candy canes. I just want to jump on really quick and just talk about the two things that were really bugging me. I really did not like Erica's tone and Erica's energy in her um, Bravo after show when she was like, Garcelle, about people should understand. Because it wasn't what she said, it was how she said it. And that is what makes it a, a racist microaggression. That's what a microaggression is. When people will say something and like on the surface, it's like, oh, okay. But when you squint and when you really listen to the tone and when you really listen to its implications, it's really messed up. It's really messed up. And I don't always go for the, oh, it's a black or white thing, you know, because I don't always think it is. Like, for example, the girls in Dubai, I don't think it has anything to do with race when it comes to Carolyn Stanberry and Chanel Ayan beefing and all that stuff. I don't think it has anything to do with white fragility and being a strong black woman. I don't think that at all. You know, um, I dive deeper into that into my uh, last recap I did the conspiracy theory. But do I think what Erica said, the way she said it about Garcelle, was there a racial undertone? 100%. It was just like, well, Garcelle's been beneath us. Garcelle has struggled. Garcelle's son has had, you know, addiction problem. Like, the, it was the way she said it and the tone that I was just like, that's a racial microaggression. It's so subtle that unless you have had that lived experience and you know what that feels like when somebody says something to you a certain way, but they say it in a way where it's like, you don't, you can't even like defend yourself. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Erica, I see you, sweetheart. I see you. I see you. And Garcelle, I want you to put her all the way down into her place. Hey, Diva, I heard Kathy gets upset with Kyle and Aspen. Yup. Based on her recent interviews. Yep. Sheree needs to take Diana's diamond. Sutton isn't going anywhere. She needs a pay raise. That part, Diva that part 100 percent hey a who do you think will be gone next season um i think it'll be rena erica diana and maybe dorit will be a friend of i think kyle can stay if she wants hey diva i think diana will be gone and lisa may be friend of shrey better pick up for a diamond 100 percent 100 percent Oh, okay, my beautiful candy canes, we did it. I just really wanted to talk about those two things quickly, but don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell because today at 2 o'clock West Coast time, 5 o'clock East Coast time, I'm going to go live again, and I'm going to do a deep dive into all of the Real Housewives of um, Beverly Hills stuff, their stuff with Teddy Mellencamp, LVP, um, the cheating with Dorit and Mauricio rumors, all of that. So we're going to do a deep dive into it, but I wanted to jump in and talk about this. And then this week, we'll be doing Married to Medicine recap. We'll be doing, um, uh, what's the other one? The Bell Collective recap, Dubai recap, and Beverly Hills recap. So you are going to want to join us, and you are going to want to get everything going. So yes, you guys, join us later today. And then don't forget to check out the community tab. There's tons of stuff going on there and the description box. I have tons of stuff. There's book, books, podcasts, merchandise, self-care goodies, all of the things. So I love you guys so much. And yeah, don't forget today, we are going to do a big deep dive into Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I love you guys. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other. And don't take no smack from no Erica Jane or Diana Jenkins. All right. Love you. Bye. Welcome to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care. Where your host, writer, actor, and producer Candy Washington helps you live a more joyful life with a cheeky dash of pop culture news. Be sure to subscribe, leave a five star review, and join the conversation on Instagram at Candy Washington. Let's go.